The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Good morning and welcome to the Seminole Nation radio program. I'm your host, Edwin Marshall. Uh, hey, it's good to be here today on this beautiful late October day. I got a lot of guests in the studio with me this morning. Uh, first of all, my co host today is Jeremy Fultz. Hidley Mahi She, Jeremy Jinda. Uh huh, Stung as us. Okay. And I've got uh, some light horse, Seminole light horse police with us, and we're going to break the new guy in today. We got a rookie. Uh, rookie cop with us, uh, <laughs> uh, Gabe Wind. Uh, of course, Gabe is a tribal member, and he just joined the Seminole Nation Light Horse. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff with him. Good morning, Gabe. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, while we're here, while we're talking about you, it's just uh, I, I introduced you, but let's get acquainted real quick. Tell me who your uh, folks are, your Seminole folks. Uh, my Seminole folks are Letitia Wesley and Nelson Wynn. Uh, I grew up in Wewoka, pretty much Seminole County. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, no, well, I, I love being a tribal member. I've always told people that. Uh, I've actually tried to be a light horseman since I started my career. So I'm, I'm very glad to be here. And All right. I you finally it got it. it. Uh, pin- finally got the it. pinnacle of success. You bet. <laughs> Hey, it's good to have you this morning. We're going to be talking about some Halloween safety stuff here in a little bit. And I uh, also want to introduce, while we're here right quick, uh, if I can find my little list that I lost, that I... I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. I got a couple other gentlemen with me. One of them's Mr. Osborne. Yeah, my name is Aaron Osborne. I've been with uh, Seminole Light Horse for about a year now, so I enjoy it. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, you're not you're you're not the rookie anymore. Yeah, <laughs> take me off. <laughs> uh, Ray Joyner. Been with Seminole Light Horse since February. Came over from the Citizens Potawatomi Nation. Well, it's good to have you guys with us. And like I said, we're going to be talking about Halloween safety here just in a little bit. And, uh, man, ain't that something when you get ready to do something? And then, oh, well. Anyway. Bow White Killer Mowi Kitskinoat, Chimokilkizbi Dayazu is moment 405 382 1010. Mad Mahungat Karundu I just said that if you have uh, announcements you'd like to uh, have broadcast on the air on Seminole Nation radio program, it's relevant to the Seminole tribe, call Bow White Killer at 405 382 1010. All right. Uh, let's see. This coming um, Sunday is November the 3rd, and the following churches will be having their fourth or eighth Sunday meetings this week. First of all, Arbica Baptist Church over near Walika, Big Arbor Baptist Church near Eufaula, Hicker Ground No. 1 near Henrietta, High Springs at Okima, and High Springs Conewa. We're both having services. Also, Hilltop Presbyterian over west of Wewoka, Little Casita, and uh, Little Casita, I, I believe that's over near Sepulpa, uh, Middle Creek Number 1, that's down near Carson, New Arbor Baptist, and that's over near Eufaula. Also, Rock Spring, Anadarko, uh, not to be confused with Rock Spring, Sasaqua, this is over near Anadarko. Also, Ryle Community Church over near Ryle, which is uh, south of Henrietta. Uh, Seminole Baptist out here by Conewa. Salt Creek Baptist 
And that's on beautiful Lake Wetumpka. Snake Creek, both one and two are having their meetings this week. Snake Creek number one being in Bixby and Snake Creek number two over here just uh, uh, south of the radio station, as a matter of fact, just right down the road. Trenton Baptist Church near Hannah. Vianne Creek Baptist Church, that's near Vianne, Oklahoma, down in Cherokee Country, and Wegawa Baptist Church, and that's up near Sand Springs, Oklahoma. Those are the churches having meetings this weekend. Uh, you're welcome to come out and join any of those churches if you'd like to go and visit. Uh, I'm sure they'd be glad to have you. All right, Jeremy, we got a little announcement also. Uh, Rock Spring Indian Baptist Church has selling some CDs. It's a two-CD disc for $20, um, limited edition. I think you were in on the production of this, right? Yeah, we sure did. We uh, recorded it for them. Right. Uh, if, you want, if you'd like to get one of these, you can contact Jim C. Harjo at 405-683-1944, Barbara Jefferson at 405-762-5243, or Rebecca Larney at 405-683-0556. Uh, they're raising funds to put a new roof on the church. Is that right, Jeremy? Yeah, they sure are. And, you know, i got to say, I probably haven't been fed as good as I was when they treated us down there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Probably could have built a new roof with uh, all the good food they fed you. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. So. <laughs> all right, this coming Saturday, uh, Caney Chapel Church um, is having a Veterans Memorial singing uh, it starts at 6 o'clock. All veterans are welcome. Uh, you go three miles east of Bowlegs on Highway 59, and that's where Caney Chapel is located. Also, this coming Saturday, uh, Salt Creek Methodist Church over between Wetumpka and Holdenville, they're having uh, a uh, veterans uh, service. Uh, everyone is invited. Uh, it starts at 2 o'clock. We'll go to 5 o'clock. Then at 5 o'clock, there's going to be a big dinner. That's uh, all of my friends over there at Salt Creek uh, Indian Methodist Church. Uh, come on out. They'd be glad to have you. Uh, Brother Mike Deer, of course, is a pastor. They have salt meat at Salt Creek. Oh, you know they do. You know they do. You know they do. Yeah, especially if the brown girls are still around. They'll, yeah. All right. And we do have an announcement for tonight's general council meeting. An emergency meeting was set for 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, the unfinished business is going to be a resolution regarding the sale of the Grisso. Oh, yeah. That's and that's right. at 7 p.m. Right. That tonight. was tabled at the last, or not, I don't know if it was tabled or, yeah, it was tabled at the last meeting and they want to dispose of that matter one way or another. So there will be a meeting tonight. Did you say it's 7, Jeremy? 7 p.m. at the Mission. Okay, Council that's House. a big topic of discussion over the last couple of years. So if you have an interest or you'd like to know what's going on, come on out. It's, it's open to the public as long as there's seating available. All right. Uh, Infant Crisis Services Baby Mobile will be providing diapers, formula, and food for babies and toddlers under four. First come, first serve. A legal guardian must be present. Uh, that's at the Seminole Nation Higher Ed, 215 East Evans on November the 13th. November the 13th. Uh, so uh, for more information, you can call 405-528-3663. Okay, and Edwin, we also have the adult boot camp going on. The start date is, uh, actually, it's already started from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. every Thursday for four weeks. Hey, they're getting a big turnout over there. I noticed that. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's one tonight because Halloween's on Thursday, and it's at the Mikasiki Mission Basketball Gym with instructor Wes Lane. Uh, Contact 405-234-234. Five two four six, or you can contact uh, Les at or um, let Wesley dot L at snow dash nsn dot gov. There is a signed waiver that's needed, but no microfit is needed. All right. Healthy Lifestyle and Diabetes Prevention Program started October the 3rd. Uh, you get skills you need to manage stress, be more physically active, eat healthy, and lose weight. This is a 16-week class and monthly for six months after that. Um, 
It'll be held at the Seminole Nation Senior Citizen Center or the OAP. Uh, for more information, you can call 405-257-7364. Uh, that's through the Wilk Indian Health Center Community Health Department. Department. Our good buddy Ron McIntosh and Myra McKitty, the RN over there. Also, Cody Foster, RN with the Tribal Diabetes Program, is a part of that. Good deal. We've got an announcement from the Judgment Fund. Attention all Seminole Nation tribal members. Oh, yeah. The deadline to spend the clothing fund is October 31st. That's Thursday. So Thursday, 2019. So all funds will be removed on November the 1st of this year. So always use your clothing card as credit purchase only. And then also inform the cashier before you purchase. So this Thursday, Halloween Day, is going to be the last time to be able to use that card for this year. Can't buy no motor oil and things like that. You got to, no cigarettes. You got to buy kids' clothes. That's what it was for. It's got to be spent by this Thursday, yep. folks. So if you know somebody's still hanging on to one. And I've got a phone number here, too, if they right. need a call. 405-382-0549. All right. All right, Coffee Talk with Nurse Cody happens every Friday from 7.30 to 9 a.m. at the Senior Citizen Center, the OAP in Wilwoka. Uh, you can, it's an open floor topics on health. It's about diabetes, what your numbers mean, a healthy heart, and a healthy you. Cody Foster, the RN, is uh, conducting this. You can call him at 405-234-5276. All right, the Seminole Nation Princess Committee coat giveaway, uh, November the 9th, uh, this year from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the North Community Building at the Mission. Uh, take a new or clean worn coat donations, and the drop-off locations are Sindoc and the uh, Seminole Nation Communications Department off East Sevens in Seminole, Oklahoma. Any information, you may contact Bernita Whitekiller, 580 580- Six six five eight zero zero two or Velma Coker at four zero five three eight zero three eight four eight. And again, that's a good thing, right there, Edwin, giving sure away is. their sure coats. Is. That's great. The Seminole Nation BCR Commission is still having their uh, tag design contest. Uh, it'll run all the way through November 29th. Do you have to be an enrolled member? Design your own tag for the veterans of Seminole Nation. Uh, they have guidelines, so uh, you can contact them for the guidelines. Turn in application and design no later than November the 29th at 4.30. Uh, applications can be mailed, picked up, or emailed at Seminole Nation BCR Commission. You can call them at 405 405- 382-8617 for more information. So, so in a couple weeks away, the Holdenville Creek Indian Communities have hosting their November Arts and Crafts Sale. Uh, oh, man, that's the one everybody looks forward to. It is. To. Yeah. Saturday, November 16th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Located at the HCIC, which is the Holdenville, I guess, Community Indian Center. Creek Indian yeah, Community. Yeah, Creek Indian Center. And so that's at 224 East Poplar Street in Holdenville. If you have any questions, you can contact Terry at 405-379-3485. All right. Also, there's going to be a basketball tournament. It's a one-day basketball tournament on November the 2nd. Um, it's uh, Oklahoma Kings Fall Basketball Festival. It's for uh, boys and girls. There's four divisions, the first and second grade boys and girls, third and fourth grade boys and girls, fifth and sixth grade boys and girls, and seventh and eighth grade boys and girls. Uh, the grades are combined grades when I say first and second, third and fourth, fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth the cost is 75 dollars a team uh first and second place medals uh you can the deadline to enter i guess was is october 30th for more information call rocky at 405-432-6572 uh i'm sorry 405-432-6574 405-432-6574 if you want something for your kids to do there you have it all right, Edwin, I don't have any more announcements All other right. than the statement from the AG. All right. The Seminole Nation Employees Battle at the Mission Basketball Tournament. There's a men's and women's division going to be held on Saturday, December the 14th. First and second place trophies will be awarded. Uh, this is free to any Seminole Nation employee. So everybody that's listening out there that's an employee of the nation or uh, you know somebody that is, be sure and give them the news. Um uh, 
each they're going to pick teams. Each person will be selected by a blind draw and play, placed on a team. Deadline is November 22nd. You can contact Victor Bear at 405-683-0071 or email bear.v at sno-nsn.gov. Employee Battle at the Mission Basketball Tournament. And I got one more item here. Uh, Seminole Nation Tribal members are invited to submit their original artwork to the Sendoc 2019 Christmas Art Contest. Create a Christmas-themed original sketch, drawing, or painting. Submit it to Martha Wind at OAP Building by 1 o'clock on November 22nd. Uh, There's cash prizes for first, second, and third place. Get this, Jeremy. Third place, $150. Nice. Second place, $350. $350. First place, $500. Is open to all Seminole Tribal members age 18 and older. Uh, must be original, created by an amateur artist. No professionals, please. Uh, and uh, for more information on any of this, I guess you can call Martha. I don't have a number right here, but you can call her at the OAP or you can call Sendoc. Uh, oh, here it is. Contact Nicole Bird Creek at 405-382-3562. I don't I think if even if I wasn't an artist, I'd give it a shot for that kind oh, of yeah. Thing, it? yeah. All right. That's open to all tribal members. Uh Christmas art contest. Well, you know what, Jeremy? I like to announce this. It's uh our friends over at Seminole Quick Pick. It's Brenda Christie and Autumn. That's the Sinclair Station, Highway 99 and 9. On Radio Day on Tuesdays, if a tribal member walks in there and says, Hey, I heard this on the Seminole Nation radio program, they'll give you a free large fountain drink, whether it's a Coke, Pepsi, whatever it is. They'll give you a free large fountain drink if you're a tribal member and you walk into the Seminole Quick Pick today and say, I heard it on the radio this morning. Edwin and Jeremy said it, so I want my Coke. Yeah, their so, hot box is pretty good, too. Oh, yeah, I like those some, little meat pies they yeah, have in there. Yeah, those those spicy ones. Yep. Yeah, they're good. Cheese so, sticks, yeah. chicken strips. I want to thank those lady. ladies for being so kind to offer that to us. And uh, real great ladies. I love to go in there and uh, shop and visit. Uh, but uh, listen, hey, we got one more announcement. No. I did it. Salt Creek Methodist Church. Yeah. What about the, um, there was a statement that was released from yesterday's meeting with the uh, Attorney General for the state of Oklahoma. Um, the uh, Take it away. Yeah. Regarding the Oklahoma Indian Gaming Association Council and the tribal leaders met regarding the state gaming compact. And uh, the official statement that was released is that we appreciate the Attorney General, Attorney General, Hunter talk, they're taking the time today to meet with tribal leaders from across the state. It is clear that the state has a major dispute over automatic renewal. Tribal leaders will take time to assess today's discussion with Attorney General Hunter. Nothing is more important to the tribes than resolving the automatic renewal, and we are committed to continue. They're committed to continued dialogue, and that was released by Chairman Matthew Morgan. Uh. That was kind of a little bit of a rhetorical report. Uh, in, in other words, we met with them. We hope we work it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, I uh, I think it's kind of funny because every time there is a um, uh, an agreement, a treaty, or anything like that, you know, somebody always comes back and says, uh, but wait a minute, we want to do something different. And the tribes are always like, no, that's not what you said originally. So... We'll just have to renegotiate this thing, I guess. But, you know, um, I I looked into this matter one time, Jeremy, because I was real interested in what the state's position was. And the state claimed that other states uh, uh, collect as much as 20 percent. Uh, What they failed to mention was that it wasn't from Indian tribes. It was from other gaming uh, entities that don't donate back to the state like the tribes do. So there's a lot to talk about there. I hope they get it worked out. But uh, you know what? Be right. Do right, man. Come on, Oklahoma. Uh, So uh, anyway, we'll we'll leave it at that. (laughs) We'll see how it goes. Hey, listen, we got Jeremy on here with highlights from the nation. Three, two. Seminologi, Jeremy Joe Jeffcoat with highlights from the nation. Friday was a busy day around the nation as people were recovering from Jafigny's adult boot camp, a successful elders forum, 
that was hosted by the language department and a scary good time was had at the Halloween carnival hosted by ASAP. And Mark Williams wanted me to let y'all know that the pictures from the carnival booth will be uploaded as an album on the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma Facebook page. But we had some good guests at the language forum. Here's the Uchis and the Muscogee Creek Nation telling us about the good time they had. Good evening, my name is Curtis Cargill. I'm from Bristow and I teach at the uh, Uchi Lake Language Learning Center in Kellyville. Fosan. Hikado <laughs> My name is Joni Spencer. I'm from Kellyville. I work at the Egypt Language Learning Center. Uh, hey, my name is Anthony Cargill, and uh, I'm from Bristol. I work at the I work at the Egypt Language Center. I uh, worked about five years, um, and uh, I work with these guys. And we're like like Joni said, you know, we don't carry on the language, and that's why that's all I like to do. And I like hearing the hearing the language, the learning the language. Uh, and then today, you know, seeing the day, it was uh, good to see uh, the Muscogee language get carried on. Rebecca Barnett, Chahotis Padoja, Se Muscogee Delwa, Istijari Bonaga, Mahaho Yarmana Dotkeidos, Yamojanita Lagayak, Isti Adilogi Hidayak, Agitle Zedos, you can wait for the video, go away, don't go for the video. So I really enjoyed it. I I thought with the gathering of the elders and everything, this is how it used to be way back. This reminded me of that, just having a fellowship, talking about our ways, uh, who we are. It was good. And I thank you for the invite, and I loved it. Mado. And those are your highlights from the nation. Mado, chika chika Mado. Hey, good job, Jeremy. Hello. Hey, I want to just kind of wrap up that little segment right there with a couple of comments. Uh, the language forum that we had the other day, we have every quarter, and uh, we call it the Elders Language Forum, and we come up with a new topic every time. This time we talked about uh, our, the ways of our ancestors and the ways that they raised their kids, the ways that they conducted their family life, the things that they did in their traditional life, and I evidently we picked on a good subject there because there was a lot of discussion yeah it was uh it was a good turnout you know the weather was kind of probably wasn't ideal but the amount of people that showed up would you say over 40 oh yeah yeah Yeah. easily over 40 people driving down a dirt road to our office you know (laughs) yeah but the food was good the topic was good traditional food we had all traditional food yeah it's great stuff and then hopefully we, we recorded it, and then, uh, hopefully I can try to have that up on our YouTube and Facebook by Wednesday. I'll tell you, and I and I really enjoyed our visitors. We had some guests from the Uchi Language Program, and uh, that's over in uh, uh, Kellyville. Yeah, there's two of them. I think, is it Glenpool and Kellyville? I think it's Kellyville and Sepulpa. Sepulpa. Yeah. But our guests were from the uh, Kellyville uh, Uchi Language Program. Uh, of course, Yoni Spencer, every, some of you know Yoni. Yoni's half Seminole. Mm-hmm. He's half Seminole. His dad was uh, Chili Spencer. Uh, that's uh, Yoni, and he uh, pretty much runs that program over there. Uh, and uh, him and uh, the Cargill boys, two of the Cargill boys, and four other ladies came with him including yoni's daughter and uh, you know there was a little bit of a kind of a little bit of a homecoming there for them with a lot of the seminal people because they know all their folks you know yeah, i was going to say it was almost like a little family reunion yeah family them. reunion yeah and so yoni told me that he really enjoyed it and so and also rebecca barnett and uh oscar harjo and uh, let's see who was the other instructor that was with us uh rebecca oscar uh susie uh I call her Susie uh, Gracine, Gracine Hicks. Uh, when I was little, I grew up with her calling her Susie Billy. <laughs> but, hey, listen, we got some guests in the studio. Good morning, guys. I introduced you a while ago, but I'll go real quickly right back through again. Tell me who you are. What your rank is? I'm uh, Gabriel Wynn. I'm a patrol officer with Seminole Nation Light Horse. All right. Yeah, my name is Aaron Arsborn. I'm with uh, Seminole Light Horse. All right. 
Ray Joyner, Sergeant with Seminole Nation Light Horse. Gabriel, Fred, Aaron. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Fred. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're here to talk about Halloween safety. You know, we we got a lot of other things that uh, you guys you guys deal with on a daily basis. Tons of other things, but you know, what's something that's real important is the safety of the children. So, uh, uh, Gabe. Give us your take on what's what's the light horse's uh, participation or involvement is in this. Well, we just want to make sure all the kids within the Seminole County and within our tribal members are staying safe on the roads, and they're making sure that they're uh, watching each other as they're going through the neighborhoods and stuff like that. And we just want to make them aware of all the things that could possibly happen. Not saying it could happen or would happen, but it happens. It, it, yeah, it, it happens. It possibly could happen yeah. with people coming up with cars and the, and the impact of stranger danger. Yeah. So we just want them to be aware. Okay, let's talk about the first item you talked about is uh, traffic safety. Okay, we and you know what? I don't care. Everybody in the world knows Halloween is October 31st. Everybody in the world knows there's going to be kids running through the neighborhoods. Everybody in the world that's driving knows that sometimes you can't see little kids very well, so you got to take it easy. But you're always going to have some idiots that, that, that disregard safety rules so mm -hmm. hey if you see some of this going on it'd be a good idea to report it don't you think there yeah i do i do especially if you can see it uh report it immediately or as fast as you can uh, we just ask for descriptions of of what the car looks like or possibly the driver if you can uh, this would help us locate that individual and get it stopped immediately we don't need one accident at all we don't need one accident uh Mr. Alderman, you've been at the tribe now for over a year, didn't you say? Yes, I yeah. have. How did how did the Halloween thing go last year? I wasn't there at that time. Okay, I came in uh, November. Oh, November, November. Yeah. Okay, so I kind of missed Not that on quite the a year. Tree. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I tell you, there are there's another item that you mentioned is stranger danger. You know these uh, people that stalk children. This is an ideal time for them to do something oh, like yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, why don't you kind of uh, give us a little bit of a, uh, some suggestions, ideas for parents? What do you What do you parents or even people that have children uh, with them? What are some good ideas to take care of those children regarding stranger danger? I would say I always try to walk with uh, some adults in the streets or so. Uh, trying to, and also, uh, if you can, before you leave your house, try to find a route so you know how to get back or so, so that you, in case you happen to get lost from somebody, you know where to meet up at so that everybody can be safe there. You know, we're talking about trick-or-treating and getting in out in the neighborhoods at dark and when we talk about traffic and uh, stranger danger and things like that. There's alternatives to that, right? There's alternatives to going out in the neighborhood and trick-or-treating. Yeah. Yeah, some of the churches are having trunk-or-treats at different times. Several of them. Yeah, some of them. I'm not sure which ones. I know the Children's Museum is having a thing for kids 12 and under from 530 to 730. They can attend the Children's Museum for free and trick-or-treat inside the there. All right. That'd be great. That'd be great. I, I did see a church right on the corner. Right. It's east of Walmart. Right. Advertising theirs. Well, there's another one going out towards our office on Highway 99, just a mile or two out. Uh, so I, it would pay to just go out today and look around and see where all these places are. Uh, so you're Well, first of all, the weather's supposed to be in the 20s, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I mean, really, I'd want my kid somewhere where it's warm and safe and nice. And, somewhere that's inside or something. Yeah. I mean, it's it, something nice and warm. Yeah. And if you try, you know, what, what our family always does when we take our kids trick-or-treating, we go to relatives and friends' houses, people we know. Because we didn't mention this, but there's always that danger of somebody uh, manipulating the goodies or the treats or something like that. Oh, Try to, I, how do you get a thrill out of doing something like that to a kid? You know, I don't understand. And then also the city of Seminole is having the Main Street Trick or Treat. Oh, yeah. So on Thursday, but it's from 3.30 to 5 p.m. So there's only an hour and a half right after school. 3.30 to 5 and, and that's a good place to go because it's going to be daylight. And then afterwards, take them to another place that has a lot of light. And just protect your kids. Take care of your kids. That's the main thing. What else, guys? Let's talk about Light Horse. What you guys been up to lately? 
We got a new guy here. We got a rookie. Mm -hmm. I say rookie. He's not a rookie. He comes from the Wilkin Police Department. Okay, he's well seasoned. You know, highly trained. Highly trained. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever felt as safe as I do right now. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. Especially all three of these guys. Yeah. So, how's everything going out there at Light Horse? Oh, pretty good. We've been staying busy. Uh, we've been having a lot of courts and just overall just hanging in there and. Trying to get the bad guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Tell us about some of your guys' uh, experience that you've had with the cross deputy. Their cross deputy. Their, how do you say cross it? deputization. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, the experience has been good. Everybody works together here in the Seminole County area. You know, occasionally when you pick up the Seminole producer, you listen to the news, you hear about how Light Horse was involved in an investigation, and sometimes Light Horse was the first one on the scene on a lot of things so yes. you know um there's no doubt hey real quickly let's talk about this what's going to happen in the murphy case if uh, creek nation gets the ruling and and uh, seminole seminole nation takes over all of seminole county uh, we're gonna need some more people yeah <laughs> yeah we need more people yeah are you are you prepared for it? Because the ruling could come down any time. Our chief has been looking into that, and he's he's making plans for it. Yeah, I know that a lot of the tribal uh, law enforcement agencies are. Uh, I read somewhere Creek Nation has already hired several several officers. Uh, they've beefed up their uh, patrol uh, units and really uh, done a lot of things. Of course, Seminole Nation won't have quite the task they do because we got one county but still yet you know if you're going to be the primary law enforcement agency in that county it's going to take a lot of stuff yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. it is it is and, and the way it's looking the way i understood it when i read it is that any indian criminal proceedings will fall on light horse so any like the whole seminole county would pretty much indian territory to where we would be the officers responding to almost any call that was criminal. Right. So exactly. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we was uh, we was talking about when I was at We Woke Up, and we got cross commissioned with uh, Light Horse at the time. Is that we would have gladly helped just because we was cross deputized at that time with Light Horse, that we'd be able to take care of hey, our city. Hey, bad more. guys, don't fool yourself. That don't mean you're going to get away with anything. Yeah, right. All we're going to do is we're going to flip flop roles with the county and the local city law enforcement. They'll still be there. No They'll way. still be helping. You bet. Mm -hmm. But we'll be the one to get you, boy. You bet. Bad boy, oh, yeah. bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sing that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do <laughs> when Gabe Wynn comes looking for That's you, right. bad boy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, anything else real quick before I shut her down? All right. Just good to safe. have you guys. Hey, good to have you guys with us. Uh, we'll have you back on the show later. And uh, we'll be back next week with another production of Seminole Nation Radio Program. Uh, I want to thank uh, everybody that's involved with this. Mark, Delaney, uh, Bo, wherever you're at. We love you, man. All right. We'll see you next week. Jesus. Right? Inga. KWSH AM 1260. Mado. <laughs>